Hello and welcome. In this short video, I'll be de demonstrating the value of NetSuite's timesheet functionality within the Services Resource Planning, or SRP, module. I'll be assuming the role of the project manager at first, and we'll, and we'll review a project that is uh, time-based and will require the timely and accurate capturing of consultant time. The project we're looking at uh, at the header level has some aggregate information for me, such as the start date, end date, estimated work, actual work, things of that nature. Uh, we also have a very detailed work breakdown structure in the schedule tab, so a number of tasks that need to be completed, uh, parent tasks, child tasks, some might be milestone tasks, uh, and a view of the progress of those tasks as well as, you know, percent completes. Financially, this project has been set up as a charge-based billing project, so we know that we'll have charges involving time that needs to be billed to the customer as well as expenses that need to be billed to the customer. And this, this particular project has a handful of resources allocated to it for different time frames and different, different percentage allocations, as we see here. Uh, Abby Kwan being one of the resources that will be applying uh, her time against uh, a task within this project. So now let's assume the role of, of Abby as a consultant who needs to put in time against this project. Abby has her own dashboard as a consultant, having project information, as well as easy links to get to uh, things like entering time, entering expenses. So we'll go ahead and enter time for Abby. And as she enters in her time sheet, she simply chooses a time frame, a week period, and can also, during that week, can be submitting time multiple times and seeing all the time that's been approved, what's pending approval, what, or what's been rejected. So all the approval process is completely visible to Abby throughout the timesheet and, and in real time. So for this case, we're going to add a little more time to our Ultima, or ERP integration project, and it'll be the integration testing project task. And the service item is designed to de determine the billing rate for this time to the customer. So we're going to actually override this. This was assigned by the task. We're going to say this is an integration billing rate. And on Wednesday the 21st, we'll put an additional four hours that we worked on that. Once we add that time in, we can go ahead and, and optionally uh, put in some additional memo information that will be viewable by, my, by Abby's manager and time approver to help make the determination whether that time should be approved or rejected. The billable checkbox is uh, defaulting to billable for this one since it is a charge-based billing project, so we will be charging for our time. If it was a fixed bid project, that would probably default to unchecked, so non-billable. So go ahead and add that time to, to the timesheet. Now, as, as a uh, consultant at Abby, I've got the ability to either save my timesheet during the week and just keep working on that until the end of the week where I would submit it, uh, or if I'm all ready to submit it to my approver, then I just click the Submit button to do that. So my time has now been submitted. Uh, I also see on, on my timesheets the approval status of all the different uh, areas. Now, and I've got some time that still needs to be approved by my manager or my, my project manager. So let's go ahead and switch over to the project manager role. In this case, Mark Collins, the project manager, is the time approver for Abby's time uh, because he, it was his name marked on her employee record. So that's the native, native method for determining who approves the project time uh, within a project. Now, on top of that, NetSuite also does support time approvals using built-in suite flow, work, the workflow engine. So using a custom time approval workflow, multiple approvers can be supported for a single employee's timesheet, and a project that they log their time to can also dictate the approver or approvers. So it doesn't simply need to be the person logged as the approver on the, on the employee record. It can be completely determined by the workflow. Now, as, as Abby's approver on this particular project, I can go ahead and, to my reminders and approve certain timesheets. 
I'm the project manager and approver for a handful of other folks, so I, but Abby is one of those people that I'm approving time for. As I approve time for individuals, I can approve it at a, at a global timesheet level by just selecting the timesheets and either saying approve or reject. Or on an individual timesheet basis, I can drill in and see all the different time entries. In this case, Abby only has one new time entry that we're going to, that we're going to approve or reject. And here's the memo information that I would see based on what she did. And I'll go ahead and just approve this time and send this to be posted to the general ledger. So approval, time of approval has been, has been complete. Next in line, from an accounting standpoint, I still need to post this time, you know, post approved time to the general ledger. So I'll assume the role of the controller. And in this role, I've got a, a link to post time. So as, as approvers are approving time, and if this might be a weekly function for me to go and post the time to a journal entry that affects the general ledger. In this case, I've got, uh, I'm filtering out by Abby, but I can look at all employees and submit time against all just by clicking a box here. Or I can filter out by a particular employee, in this case, Abby, just for demo purposes. And here's our time that we just put in, so we'll go ahead and approve that. Once posted, this time it's automatically it's impacting the associated project as a cost based on the labor rate of the employee, Abby in this case. And this cost can be viewed from the project record. So here we have this, the uh, posting of the time going in to be processed. Let's flip back over to just flip over to our project record, and as time is posted, we can go to our related transactions tab on the project and see all of those costs, including time costs. So this might be expenses in addition to time. In this case, we have journal entries from posting time for our ERP integration project, and that shows up there. Uh, any revenues against the project, any, any time billed to the customer would show up on your sales. And the billing of that time would be based on uh, the, the billing frequency and the billing schedule that's tied to this project. So to summarize the benefits of timesheets, they're part of Core NetSuite and are available via a browser, as we see here, or through a free NetSuite iPhone app. Timesheets support, support, support both native and custom workflow-driven approvals, which streamlines the time and effort for getting accurate project time recorded. And since timesheets are a part of the overall services resource planning strategy, posted time immediately impacts the project P&L, and it's immediately available for customer billing. This concludes the demonstration of the timesheets feature within the NetSuite services resource planning offering. Thank you.